Hello everyone and thank you for joining us. Today we are talking about how to create a black on black look. The key is to create separation in your scene through lighting and texturing. Part 1 will focus on the concepts and in part 2 we'll break down a couple scenes using what we've learned. So let's jump in and see what it's all about. Alright, so black on black look. So it's a nice look and it's uh, it's actually not that hard to create. So that's the good news. So this, this lesson is going to be uh, mostly about lighting and texturing. And uh, the first part, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you a few concepts of kind of how to think about it when you're setting it up. And then the second part is I'm going to kind of walk backwards uh, through my setup um, for the cover page and uh, kind of show you how I got there and some of my thought processes. Um, Alright, so black on black look. It's not hard. Um, it just requires a little bit of TLC and a little bit of, um, yeah, back and forth and patience and just, um, yeah, just doing, I guess. Um, so how do you do it, right? What do you do with a black on black look? How do you create it? Because if you have two things that are pure black, what's going to happen? Nothing's going to show up, right? All right. So how do you do it? So the trick with black on black is you have objects that are essentially the same values, right? You have objects that are dark. Um, or in some shade of darkness and you need to separate those objects. Separation is the key to making this work. You have to separate your objects in some way. Now the best ways to do that is through lighting and texturing. Um, not only with lighting and texturing but also with your model shapes, right? Um, is another way that you can create separation. Alright, so let's demonstrate. So let's go ahead and let's start our IPR. And right now in this scene, what I have, I just have a shoe and I have a plane and I have a camera. I have nothing else. So there's nothing right now. Um, let's go ahead and let's make a new light because right now we just have our default light on. I'm just going to make an area right light. Um, I'm going to turn off the IPR while I do this because sometimes it likes to not be happy. Um, all right, so let's take our area light and with our area light, I'm going to go to my attributes and I'm going to object and I'm going to add a target tag and null. Now I'm just going to center this because um, my shoe itself is in the center. I'm going to raise uh, the, the area light a little bit and then I would like to turn down its intensity because these are always way too high um, whenever you bring them in. All right, so let's see what we got here. So as soon as we turn it on, we see that we have, well, essentially we have white on white, right? We have kind of the opposite of what we want. Uh, a couple of reasons for that is I think our light is still too large, right? So let's just get it down a little bit less. Uh, the more, the smaller the light is, the more it's going to reduce in its intensity as it would in the real world. Um, and then let's go ahead and... Um, this is creating some fall off, right? So this is good. But let's go ahead and let's... You know what? Let's make it just a tiny, tiny bit smaller because I want a little bit more fall off. Let's go. What are we at now? I don't know. Let's try 10 and 10 or something. Yeah. Already you can see we're getting some nice shadows that are happening here and we are getting, um, yeah, just more fall off that's happening. It's not quite so bright. Okay. So next we need to create our texture and the texturing and the lighting, they, they go hand in hand, right? Because right now I can, I can't really make this black. I could try, I could try to like, you know, move this around and maybe I could get a piece and maybe I can make it dark enough, but I mean, you're kind of getting it there, right? Um, but it's not really advantageous for us to do this. It's not really something that would be to our benefit. Um, so let's go ahead and create a new texture. And the textures are just as important as the lighting, as with, I mean, pretty much with all lighting um, or any CG, that's, that's how it's going to be, right? They, they work together. If you have a shitty texture, if you have the wrong texture, then it's not going to uh, look as nice as it could. So let's step into our texture and let's make our weight of our diffuse a darker color. Excuse me, not our weight. Let's make the color of our diffuse a, a lighter, a darker color. Okay. As soon as we do this, you see we get some weird Frankenstein thing, but let's go ahead and put this on here. And now you'll see what we have is we have a very shiny, um, dark object that we can't tell what's happening. All right, so what do we need to do? We need to create separation. So we, we have really no separation right now. I can't tell what's happening. So the first thing I like to do to create separation is I like to actually up the roughness of the reflection a little bit, because when you do that, it starts to, to cover the areas more, right? It starts to give you more information about the areas. Now you don't have to do this, of course, if you if you have a certain look you're going for, then you're 
um, path might be different. But already you see now we're getting a lot more fall off and it's becoming a lot nicer and pleasant to the eye and I can kind of understand a little bit what's happening. So let's go ahead and say that we like that. Maybe we just bump it up a little bit and see if we keep bumping it, bumping it, it's gonna become almost gray, um, which we don't want. So let's just go somewhere in the middle. And we're gonna start with simple textures and move up from there. Um, now, next thing I'd like to do is I'd like to actually start to, to, to put the lights on properly. So let's just go ahead and say that this is our key and this is the key target. So let's go ahead and let's move this. Cause what I wanna do is I want to, I want this shoe to feel like it's coming out of the darkness. So to do that, I need to have a light that's kind of pinpointed, right? I wanna have a light that's kind of pinpoint. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my key light and I'm actually gonna lower its spread. Now the spread is basically, you see if I go to like almost zero, it's, well, if I go to zero, you're gonna get a pure like harsh line of this square but I don't want to quite do that I want to do something like in here maybe and then I would actually like to still lower this a little bit because what we're trying to do is I'm trying to to create a mood right and then let's take our key target not and then let's put it like over here so now what's happening you see because we, we the spread was so low um, it's it, it gets this nice fall off like it's coming from the darkness, right? So this is kind of of course I've done this before so I kind of know the setup, but this is um, This is how you kind of achieve uh, At least how I achieve this this coming out of the darkness look right now We have one obvious problem and that's that our our, um, our spec is way too high um, And so the first thing I would try to do is maybe let's just lower the exposure on this And that already is starting to feel better Maybe you just lower it a bit. And for now, we'll say that that's good. Um, and see what we're doing now is we're getting the contours of this. Um, you know, my key light, you have to think about, you have to think about what, what story you're telling, right? Like, what do you want people to look at? Like, what's the most important thing for them to look at? Well, I'm guessing if you're doing a shoe product, it's probably gonna be, well, obviously the shoe, but, but the logo, you know, that people want to see a logo, or maybe it's like a new feature underneath, underneath the sole, or maybe it's the laces, whatever it is, you want to tell that story. So this is cool. So we have our, our key light and we have a nice dark on dark look, and we honestly haven't done that much. Um, so the next thing I'd like to do is I would like to copy this. I'm going to turn the viewport off for a second. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to create a rim light. Now the rim light is going to further continue to help us build definition, right? Because we still, you could do this and it would be great if this is what you wanted, but that definition is still could be better. So let's take a rim light and for this scenario, I'm going to put my rim light, I'm going to switch to the top view here and I'm going to put my rim light here in the back. Okay, and I'm gonna make it much wider. And let's just see, I'm also gonna make a new target. Let's say rim target. Okay, let's put that to that. And I'm gonna turn off the key just to see what we are dealing with. It's probably gonna be off at first, yeah. So right now it's kind of like on top, which we don't really want, we want it behind. So what I'd like to do is I would like to carve out the shape of the back of the shoe, right? I'd like to feature some of the some of the parts that um, the 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 key light is not. So I'm going to go to my top view, and I'm going to move this to the back. So now that we're getting we're getting this kind of like hit that's happening right here in the back, and we're actually able to once again create separation. Okay, now I think right now our light is too tight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna up the spread a bit. So that way we get a little more wide of coverage. Now the one thing that I'm noticing that's happening that I don't like is this rim is affecting the floor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go a project and I'm gonna tell it to exclude the floor. That way it's just affecting the shoe and um, we're happy. Okay, so I think that this could maybe be a little closer and like, well, maybe not like that. Maybe I need to, for the rim, we definitely need to put down this intensity, maybe like three, something like that. And then let's maybe,
And why, why, why am I, why am I doing this? Well, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make it wider, right? I'm trying to make this, this rim cast wider because I want more detail to come through. And the wider that this is and the, the less spread it is, see, so you get, you get a lot less detail and it just kind of gets blown out when you do that. So let's, let's continue to maybe up the spread just a little bit. So now what I'm doing is I'm creating separation from our what would be background if we had one, which in this case we will not. Okay, I also like seeing a little bit on that toe. All right, so we're gonna say that maybe this is okay. Let's see what it's like with the key. And then all of a sudden you see we've created a light to dark scenario pretty quick. Uh, now this of course needs some finesse and um, it can, uh, you know, of course have more finesse, but where the finesse can also come in is with your textures, right? Right now we have the exact same texture on everything. So texture also creates variety and it creates um, variation and tonal variation and everything. Um, so let's, let's take one more look. Let's turn off the key. So to recap, we did a key light in the back, a, a rim light in the back that is creating separation for us um, from the background. And then we did a key light that is focusing our main object. Now, um, I wanted to use all the same material because for the next part of this, um, I'm gonna show you the actual cover page uh, scene. And then you can see exactly what I did in exact placement. It's pretty similar to this, but there's also differences. So let's switch over to that. All right, so over here uh, in the actual cover page, what I've done differently is, so our lighting setup is basically the same. There's a couple of things that are different though. And um, one thing I forgot to mention in the first part is um, with your lights, you don't wanna be introducing artificial or you don't wanna be in introducing any warm or cools either if you truly are going for a pure black look. So what I've done is I just have my color set to white. But what I'm actually doing is I'm actually adding a softbox in here too, because what a softbox will do is it'll just soften up these edges even more. Now, of course, they're all some are different, but the ones I, the one that I'm using is softening up this edge a bit, and it's also just creating a softer look overall for the fall off on this. Um, I've also added uh, a kicker light here, so the kicker light is basically just adding a little bit of definition um, in this area. So you can actually see kind of the front a little bit. And then the rim is probably pretty similar to what it was. I think maybe the rim, yeah, the rim also has a soft light on it. So basically I put a soft box just to kind of soften everything up. Now the biggest thing that is different is that we have textures on here now. Now these textures are gonna create a lot of variety, right? So I, I built this like leather texture here um, and it's essentially just uh, Cinema 4D noise and it is um, just a roughness uh, texture that I got from Quixel, I think. Uh, yeah, Quixel. Um, and that's all I'm doing. I'm running, it, I'm running the noise through a bump. And then I have a laces texture, which is literally just, I'm just taking um, uh, just a default. I'm using just the displacement and bump for it. Uh, and then I have a mesh material that I also got from Quixel and that might be worth looking at. Let's go ahead and go to the mesh material. Now, the reason why this is worth looking at is because sometimes you'll get a base color and the base color in this situation was white, right? So the base color was white. What I did is I ran this through a ramp. Let me see if I can get this, yeah. So I ran this through a ramp and I actually made it so it's, it's not so, um, oh. Wait a minute, I ran it through this ramp, here we go. I ran it through this ramp and this ramp turns it black basically, is what it does. So if you ever get a diffuse color and you need to do that, just run it through a ramp and then you can have full control over the range of everything and you can make it just black. Um, let me put this back to how it was. So the floor also has um, some variation in it and again, if there's anything to take away from this lesson is, is create separation, right? You have an all dark look and all dark can mean variations of gray, right? Because you don't want pure black. So essentially you're gonna need variations of gray, right? And then um, the last thing I would like to talk about is based on your angle, right? You're gonna have to switch your light sometimes. Um, like this angle looks pretty good, but I don't know, like what's this look like? This looks like crap, you know, like this doesn't look good. And then if I go here, it's for sure gonna look like garbage. So you have to, you know, you have to consider what your actual output is, right? Where you are actually, your final preview is going to be. 
or whatever your final render. The one other thing I wanted to show was I also did one other scene. Peek behind this. So basically this is uh, the same setup. I think maybe I have some older textures on here or something, but I'll just run you through the lighting because it's the same concepts on everything. As soon as it loads up here. So this one, all I'm doing is the shoe is just like flying in air. There's like some, some of these like, I don't know, cement blocks or something coming from it. Um, but let's run through the lights. So at one point it looks like I, I had a dome and I was thinking about a second rim, but really there's only two lights on here again. So I have, um, let's start with the key light. So the key light, what I'm doing is, I mean, that's kind of dope too. Though, right? Like that's almost cooler in a way, but I know if you're doing a product shoot, you're probably not going to get away with that. But that's kind of dope, right? That's like one light. Um, so anyways, the key light is on this one, I'm actually using, um, once again, I'll, I'll, I'll link to this, but it's a, uh, it's, it's one of these sample packs from this guy, um, Pingo. Yeah. Pingo.nu. And he basically, uh, this is creating the fall off. So I have a light texture that's creating the fall off. And then I'm really the spread. What I wanted to do is I wanted to have the, um, the light hit the logo. Cause once again, we're selling right in this case, we're telling a story, we're selling whatever. Whereas if I had it really wide, you'll see it doesn't really do as much for us. So I want it to be more pinpointed and concentrated. Um, and then I also thought it would be nice to see the base or the, the sole of the shoe. Um, so what I did is I, I put a rim light that's below it. So I'll, I'll kind of step out here. Hopefully it doesn't switch my views. It did. Uh, I don't know why it does that. Okay, I got to lock this, then come out. Okay, so yeah. So basically I have a rim light that's being hit here at the bottom. So there's a rim light coming from the bottom. And then there's a, the key light that's coming from the top. And uh, the rim light itself has a, has a widespread and um, I'm mixing the color and temperature um, together. Um, and that's, that's kind of it, guys. I mean, like really the, the main takeaway is think about how you can uh, separate, separate your objects and good models will always go really far too. Um, and if you have any questions, please let me know. If you'd like to see more of this kind of stuff, please let me know. Uh, we love to do it, and I will see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.